In the circulator amplifier shown here, designed using four op amps, we want to show that the delta between V3 and V4, these two voltages, is a function of R times I1 plus I2, in which the I1 and I2 are these two currents, and R is the resistor repeated in the circuit, is the parameter of the circuit. It is interesting because we are not talking about I3 and I4, we are talking about I2 and I1 here. So let's see how is this possible, and there is a quick way to uh, prove this, and uh, I'm going to show it. I'm going to shift this on top so that it's not distracting us, and let's focus on uh, the first op amp. So I'm going to make the assumption that uh, all the four op amps shown are properly biased. By bias, I mean the supply voltages, let's say plus 5 volt, negative 5 volt, for all the op amps properly connected. Op amps assume that the negative feedback is the dominant feedback for all of them. So op amps assume to be in linear region of operation. Therefore, I'm going to write that for all four op amps, mutual short is valid, which means voltage at the positive input terminal is equal to voltage at negative input terminal for each op amp. Okay, so if we have, if I change the color, so if we have V1 for uh, this across this impedance Z, then we have voltage V1 at positive terminal. As a result of virtual short, we have voltage V1 at negative terminal as well. The same thing for op amp 2. V2 here, because of this voltage V2, and therefore V2 here as well. The same thing for op amp 3, and the same thing for op amp 4, because of virtual short. All right, let's also refer to, I'm going to remove these supply voltages, but they are there. Let's also refer to the voltage at the output of op amp 1 as VA, at the output of op amp 2 as VB, op amp 3 VC, op amp 4 VD. And you can see that via this wire, we are clearly connected to uh, this node. Uh, so VD appears here as well. So I'm going to write VD here. Okay, so... Now, there is an interesting um, observation going on. Because uh, the current that is going from VA to, over to this resistor, and when it comes down, it can only go through the other resistor. It cannot go through this wire to the input of op amp, because ideal op amp, uh, or a very good design op amp, has practically infinite input impedance. So the current going in is uh, practically zero. So this current that is going through R keeps going on through R effectively as if these two resistors R are in series together on top. Okay, so what is the benefit of that? Well, that means since we have exactly R and R repeated, this node V1 should be a midpoint voltage-wise between VA and VD. All right, so what I'm trying to say is... Uh, which I'm going to quickly show it easily using uh, KCL. So what I'm trying to show is V1 should be midway between VA, so I'm going to write it here, VA and VB, VD. So that's the meaning of what I said. But uh, just to show it quickly, because it takes only a few seconds, KCL or Kirchhoff current law says whatever current coming to a node should be equal to the current that is going out of the node. So current I that I'm showing on top should be equal to VA minus V1 divided by R. That's the, that's the current that is going through this resistor R, this current. So VA minus V1 divided by resistor. And then it should be equal to this other current, which is V1 minus VD divided by R. So equal to V1 minus VD divided by R. Well, this R and R cancel out, and then we, when we reshuffle things, we will get to exactly this equation. Okay, great. We can do the same thing for the second stage, which is this stage, meaning that I can say V2, which appears here, is midway between VB and VA. So therefore, I can say V2 is VB plus V. A divided by 2. And then V3 is VC plus VB divided by 2. And then V4 is VD plus VC divided by 2. So let's refer to these as equation 1, 2, 3, and 4. 
Now, the next set of equations would be given that uh, these two resistors, R and R, are effectively virtual parallel because on one side we have a common node, Vd, uh, and on the other side we have a virtual common node, V1, and uh, these two resistors, R and R, as, as it's shown here, they are effectively virtual parallel. So as a result, uh, they should have the same current because they have the same voltage drop across them, delta V across them should be the same. So they have the same current. What is the benefit of that? Uh, the benefit is this current I1 here, at the beginning of circuit, it can only flow through the resistor R. Again, it cannot go through the input imp input terminal of I ideal op amp because it has practically infinite impedance. Because of what I said about these two resistors R effectively being in parallel uh, virtually, they have they should have the same res current going. So if the current I1 is flowing through the lower resistor R, the current I1 should flow to the higher resistor R as well. So uh, this current that I just wrote on top is I1. And I can write another set of equation by saying that another set of equation by saying that uh, I1 so VA minus VD the two voltages that we have here VA and VD should be equal to uh, two times so I'm gonna just uh, clean up so should be equal to resistor R in series with resistor R so 2R times I1 so therefore I can write VA minus VD is equal to 2R times I1 I can do the same thing for second stage. I can write VB minus, so for second stage, I can write VB minus VA should be equal to R plus R times I2. So that would be, let me just clean up again. So that would be VB minus VA is equal to 2R times I2. So next equation, I can do the same thing for stage three I can say VC minus VB should be equal to R plus R times I3. So uh, as a result, I can write VC minus VB is 2R times I3. And then for stage four, I can do the same thing. I can say VD minus VC should be equal to R plus R, 2R times I4. So I can say VD minus VC is 2R times I4. Let's name these equations as equation now 5, 6, 7, and 8. So now, if I want to get to V3 minus V4, the best strategy is to combine these two equations. And by saying combine, I mean 3 minus 4. So if I do 3 minus 4, V3 minus V4 show up on the left side, and then on the right side, VC cancel out with VC, and what I get is VB minus VD divide by, divide by 2. Okay, and uh, what, how can I further simplify this? Let's use combination of 5 and 6, but this time let's add them together. 5 plus 6 is going to help us in the sense that when I add 5 and 6 on the, on the left side of equation, I can get rid of VA. So if I do that, add them together, and I, I can get VB minus VD equal to uh, 2R times I1 plus I2. So now, if I refer to this as equation 9, I can use equation 9 to substitute for numerator of the, this equation I have here, VB minus VD. So 2R times I1 plus I2 divide by 2, 2 cancel out. And then as a result, I get 
v3 minus v4, the left hand side equal to r times i1 plus i2. And this is the equation I was chasing, trying to find, um, which says that the def delta between the v3 minus v4 is, two is r times i1 plus i2. We can use and uh, the same approach and prove a uh, similar property between other voltages and other current. But uh, this interesting property helps us with uh, utilizing this circuit to realize interesting property, including impedance converter that I'll show in another example. I hope that this is helpful.